All right, everybody, half a day, and welcome to D18 tonight. I'm your host, Jason Salas, and joining us in studio are your senatorial candidates, Republicans, incumbent Senator Luis Munoz. Senator, half a day. Half a day. Thank you so much for being with thank us here, as me. well as Ryan Calvo. Ryan, thank you for being with us, sir. Oh, thank you, everybody. And we have a lone Democrat sitting in the middle. I, I don't know if he's bookended or we're doing this staggered, you know, for, <laughs> for continuity purposes. but For we, respect. Th there you go. We appreciate Celestine Babata, sir. We're very happy to have you here. Thank we, you. And we'll begin by giving each of you 30 seconds with which you can state an introduction, talk about your platform, or just basically talk to the constituency. So, you know, ladies first, if you gentlemen don't mind. Sure. Senator, 30 seconds. Thank you so much, Jason. Thank you so much for having me here. Uh, my name is uh, Senator Luis Borja Munoz. I'm currently sitting in the 34th Guam Legislature, and uh, I would like to continue um, my journey in, in the legislature um, and focus on health care and even women's uh, protection and children's working families as a working mom. All right. Well, thank yeah. you so much, Senator. And once again, we, we appreciate you being here. Thank you. All right. Sal Babauta, you have 30 seconds, sir. My name is Celestine Cruz Babauta, and I'm offering the people of Guam my education, experience, and my desire to give back to the people. I graduated from Southern Illinois University with a Master of Science degree in Workforce Education and Development, a Bachelor of Science in Occupational Education, and an Associate's degree from the Community College of the Air Force in Transportation and Traffic Management. I was a, a vice... Um, Chairman of the Board of Education, the first elected board. I was an associate dean at Guam Community College. I was uh, director for the Pacific Vocational Education Improvement Program. All right, well, thank you so much, sir. And Southern Illinois University, the Salukis, am I correct? Absolutely. That's right. <laughs> Go Salukis. Yeah. All right, Ryan Calvo, you have 30 seconds for your introduction. Hi, Hafade. My name's Ryan Calvo. I'm number nine on the uh, Republican side of the uh, ballot. Uh, my platform is uh, year one. And it's what we, I plan to uh, work with uh, my colleagues in the 35th Guam Legislature, provided you vote us in there. And it stands for Youth, Environment, Agriculture, and Reform. Yes, and uh, thank you, and thank you guys for also to being candidates and everybody for helping us. All right, well, we are going to hit the ground running, and we are coming out hot. Once again, you can go on to our Facebook page. Just go to facebook.com slash KUAM News. This is your show. You will ask all the questions, so please make sure to put them in right now, and I will definitely ask our esteemed guest tonight, and we will start with the incumbent senator. Um, my question, and it will be the same for all of you, but we'll start with you, Louise. Why do you want to continue to do this work? You touched on that briefly and everything, but you know, two years is a very brief amount of time. You want to continue your work, as you say. Why would that be? Yeah, well, um, I feel like there's a lot more to do and a lot more to learn. And this has been probably one of the most contentious uh, bodies that we've sat in because we've had so many um, uh, adversities to get through. I also feel like there's a lot more that I can do as far as health care, uh, preventative care, and then, of course, uh, 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 just to, to kind of help people in, in that general sense. All right, very well, yeah. thank you. Sal Babato, you said your, uh, your resume and your LinkedIn profile, I would assume, is uh, very broad and you have a wealth of experience. Why do you want to be a senator and what do you want to focus on? Absolutely. Um, I uh, have over 20 years of experience in vocational technical education, and I would like to use my education and experience to open up a Guam vocational career technical high school simply so that we can uh, prepare our students for uh, uh, jobs that pay for more uh, than minimum wage. The other thing is that we can definitely use the uh, high school to minimize the amount of uh, H2 workers coming into Guam. All right, thank you so much. Now, Ryan Calvo, you were talking about the youth movement, and certainly part of your generation is looking to you for leadership. Um, why do you want to be a senator? Uh, I enjoy helping people. I want to, uh, I believe in uh, standing the next generation up and coming together and working in the 35th Guam legislature with the other two branches of government and public service. All right, very well. Following the footsteps of my grandfather and my family. All right, very well. Thank you so much. And very noble work that each of you wants to pursue. And for our first question, the question's coming in. We are going in hot, you guys, because uh, our first question is from C. John Bell on Facebook. And keep those questions coming in on our comment stream, you guys. We'll start with you, Senator. Um, what is your position on casinos and recreational marijuana? Big issues right off the top. Well, yeah, um, it's kind of hard to put the two together. Mm -hmm. um, I do believe that uh, for the will of the people, uh, they've already uh, determined that uh, casinos is not something that they want here on Guam. Uh, but I do believe that in, in both aspects between uh, the recreational marijuana and casinos, Things are changing. Times are different than they were years ago. Yeah. Um, and, and I'm willing to support whatever the will of the people is. All right. Very well. Okay, Mr. Babato, your thoughts on 
casinos and recreational marijuana. As the senator said, there may or may not be a correlation between the two. Um, thank you for that question. With regards to casinos, um, I've learned uh, way back uh, in the um, 80s and the 90s that uh, casinos uh, were not uh, a, a very good uh, leisure for uh, families. So I'm not really uh, supportive of casinos. With regards to uh, recreational marijuana, I really want to make sure that, the Gu that Guam is very well educated so that in the implementation of that in the event, uh, we need to make sure that uh, there's good education, good uh, preparation, and good rules and regulations that are put in place. All right, thank you very much, sir. Now, uh, Ryan, your thoughts on casinos and recreational marijuana for our island community? Uh, recreational marijuana, I think that's something that we'll have to look into in the 35th. It's not something we can answer here on this couch. Um, as far as the compassionate medicinal marijuana, I, I agree with that. You know, it's, uh, we don't want to infringe on the people's rights from the time that they voted, and we want to help strengthen those, uh, that, that law mm. and uh, make it a stronger bill. It's a, it's a dicey issue. And as far as casinos, Guam is for all of us. There's a way to make it work. All right, fair enough. Good answers all. Our next question comes from someone who is very outspoken on island issues, Mr. Andre Bainham. Senator, and we'll start with you. I'm sure you're familiar with, uh, with his concerns. He's asking, since Guam has no abortion doctors, would you as a senator be willing to help recruit physicians that provide that service for local women? Now, you talked about, you know, health care issues. Um, I, well, that's kind of a, a very sensitive issue. Mm -hmm. uh, as a, a Catholic, and I grew up as a Catholic, um, I'm more pro-life. Um, I don't know if that I, I would support uh, abortion mm -hmm. at all. Um, I do believe that... Uh, Everyone has a, a, has a right to life, even babies. Mm -hmm. So I don't know that I would support that. Okay, very well. Uh, Mr. Bobata, how about you when it comes to po the possibility of recruiting physicians that provide the service of abortion? I really don't uh, support abortion. Uh, therefore, I uh, really don't have any um, urging to recruit off island or on island to perform abortion. Uh, uh, and again, uh, I, I'm really um, totally uh, opposed to uh, to abortion. I'm a pro-life person. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. Now, Ryan Calvo, your thoughts? I think every fetus deserves to be treated with compassion and love, and we should strengthen our safe harbor mm -hmm. uh, so that if you didn't want the individual, if it was done out of a violent act or in spite, you know, something nefarious, then uh, there's always a place for them so you don't have to resort to killing an embryo. Mm -hmm. All right, well, thank the three of you for those questions. Now, we have a lot more coming up, and we have your questions because, once again, this is your show, completely interactive, and we invite you right now, jump on our live stream on Facebook, facebook.com slash News. Once again, interact with our three esteemed panel, but we will be right back after this. Smiling is a natural response to joy, happiness, and excitement. Your smile reveals a lot about who you are. A healthy, beautiful smile can brighten your appearance and be an invitation to conversation and friendship. It is often one of the first things people notice about you. Now, thanks to the advancements in dentistry, you can have the smile you have always wanted, giving you an improved smile that looks and feels great. My silver fillings that I have, they're getting older in my mouth and I need to replace them. So I've started to do that and I've replaced them with the white fillings and I've had really great success with that. It looks good, they feel natural, and it kind of goes hand in hand with the bleaching. I want my, a white look all around my mouth.
All right, everybody, welcome back. D18 continues, and we continue to take your questions, which are on our Facebook live stream right now. Once again, we have senatorial candidates Ryan Cavill, Selva Balta, and Senator Luis Munoz. Thank you once again for being with us here all. And we go to our Facebook comment stream for our, our first question of what is round two. And Ryan, I'd like to start with you, so we'll go left to right this time. Stephen Blake, a Facebook user, asks, Ryan, what can you do to improve the government of Guam shortfalls without taxing our people again? I was reading in the paper the other day in the opinions column online and we should mirror the False Claims Act locally because that right there will produce a lot of revenue and get back a lot and capture a lot of the revenue that's been lost. All right, good thoughts. Uh, that's, that's just one way, you know, from, from the armchair here. Mm -hmm. But when we get in there, we'll assess the, uh, where the government's at because mm -hmm. I don't have a true picture yet. All right. All right, Mr. Bavalta, how would you improve GovGuam shortfalls without imposing taxes on Joe Average? And I, would, I would definitely look at uh, putting together um, uh, a tax recruitment uh, group at uh, Revenue Tax update their uh, financial management system to ensure that uh, all the taxes that are due the government of Guam are uh, accounted for. And definitely before we uh, even think about raising taxes, we need to make sure that taxes are collected, especially from the rich. Uh, so therefore, uh, really, I, I don't believe in raising taxes. We need to go after those who owe the government taxes before we do anything right. else. Yeah. All right, very fair. Thank you so much. Senator, this is something you've dealt with on a daily basis for the past two years. What are your thoughts on this very pressing issue? Well, I have lost a lot of sleep on it because uh, generally I don't believe in raising taxes at all. Um, there are so many different ways that we can raise revenue um, in, in the government now um, by tapping into maybe industries that have not uh, been ta uh, taxed yet or even um, supporting revenue and tax to actively collect more of our taxes. Uh, but immediately what we do need um, is we need something right now um, to, to cover the shortfall. So this has been a really tough decision to make. And, um, but I think there's ways that we can actually do this. All right. Yeah. Well, well, thank you so much. Well, the Facebook comment stream is really, really active right now, and we will tap the next question from Britt Nicole Tomenez. Britt, thank you so much for this question. Very good one. We'll start with Ryan Calvo once again. Ryan, Britt asks, as a senator, what will you do to help preserve Guam's natural resources? You have 30 seconds, please. Oh, thank you, Britt. We'll work closely together with MPS, the Department of Interior. Uh, I'd like to thank the uh, representative from Guam, the Congresswoman Madeline Berdalio, for helping to, to work alongside the Department of Interior and uh, we'll make the U.S. Uh, our close uh, federal uh, counterparts. They do a big uh, hand and effort. Also, US, UOG we also get Range Rangers uh, going. There's a lot of uh, families that are already uh, contributing to the factor, so we'll work closely with them. And thank everybody, and thank you, Britt, for your, your question. All right, Selva, about the same question to you, and you have 30 seconds. Now, you said you went to school in Colorado, a place that has lush natural resources. How can we bring that to our island? I went to uh, Southern Illinois University. Mm -hmm. But anyways, um, we need to... to take a look at this in a more holistic approach and that we need to, to get our stakeholders with regards to uh, uh, the natural uh, resources and, uh, and, and get uh, everybody's minds together and come up with some uh, ideas on what's the best approach to, uh, to tackle this issue. Uh, the, the, the natural um, resources of Guam are very important and it's imperative that we do what we can to preserve them. All right, thank you so much. Okay, now you went to Southern Illinois, but you said you knew my father when he came back from Colorado. So that absolutely. Was the oh. yeah, thank absolutely. You. Thank yeah. you for pointing that out. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Senator, same thing to you. Uh, what will you do to help preserve our island's natural resources? I think this is a community effort um, and not just so much the legislature. I think everybody needs to come together and actually work on how we can actually uh, uh, protect our natural resources. Um, it's not just, oh, let's, uh, let's protect this area because the, we don't want the military to come in there. I think it's everybody in general. We all need to come together. This is the beauty of our island. We need to do it together. All right. Well, our next topic, everybody, comes to us from Christine Stephanie on Facebook. And Christine is asking about the Guam Solid Waste Authority's receivership and taking care of disposing of waste. We just talked about natural resources. Christine says, Guam taxpayers, Ryan, spent over $20 million in management fees to GSWA receivership. What are your thoughts on the recent extension of the receivership after a decade? How do you feel about that issue, extending uh -huh. receivership? That's something that we'd have to wait till we get into office uh, to <clears throat> talk with the individuals that are there. I'm glad for the receivership and getting us in, into compliance. And uh, we, we got to uh, reduce our, our, our impact and our imprint on the environment. There's plenty of ways. I thank all the businesses that are doing it, every individual that's already doing it. 
uh, and, and getting more involved with the, with the programs to become more green and mm -hmm. uh, environmentally friendly. All right. Yes, and reduce, reuse, and recycle. All right, well, thank you so much. Selba Bata, what, what do you say about, we talked about natural resources first, and now we're talking about proper disposal and the extension of the receivership. Guam is such a small island that uh, it's imperative that we uh, tackle the issue with the solid waste. Uh, and, and I would definitely sit down and work with all parties um, and, and to do a, an objective analysis of um, our, our solid waste and ensure that uh, the, the, the policies and procedures are put in place uh, to effectively handle the, uh, the solid waste so that uh, we uh, take care of that issue in a more effective manner before we even transition from the receivership to uh, government of Guam. All right, thank you very much. Now, Senator Louise Muni, your thoughts on the receivership extension? Um, that's a very complex issue. Mm -hmm. um, and, and even throughout all of the, the hearings, uh, the public hearings that we've gone through and some of the bills that we've passed, uh, it's still definitely a learning issue. You have to learn the history of why we even get, got into the receivership in the first place. Um, but I do know that we still have a lot of work to do, and uh, the extension of the receivership is an opportunity for us to, to learn a little bit more about it, too. As all well. right. Well, thank you very much all once again. And we are going to take another commercial break, but our show continues to stream right here on Facebook Live. These three distinguished Guamanians are trying to earn your endorsement as a vote. So make sure to get those questions in because we will be back right after this. Introducing the Alpha Plus app. Pay insurance premium online using the pay feature. Get estimate quotes for auto, home, commercial, and other insurance offered by Alpha insurers. View our list of exclusive deals available at our partner merchants. So download the all new Alpha Plus app on Google Play or the App Store. Alpha Plus, make every day a plus. As a nurse, I cared for thousands of patients at their time of greatest need. I know how important it is to have our only public hospital accredited. With your help, Josh and I will change our island's approach to healthcare. We will reduce insurance costs, make sure there are enough beds at GMH, better utilize public health centers, and invest in the latest technology. We will get the job done. I'm in to help get us there, and I humbly ask for your vote. I'm and I approve this message. In this divided world, there are still things that unite us. Great music, thrilling games, and the love for that perfect burger. Ruby Tuesday Guam, for the love of burgers menu. For a limited time, get an amazing burger for just $11.99. Lunchtime at Ruby Tuesday Guam. All right, welcome back to D18 tonight, everybody. And we are starting in the middle of the couch with your questions from Facebook. So I'm about to thank you for being with us here once again, thank sir. Thank you, thank you. And congratulations on your candidacy. We'll start with you. Once again, a question from Stephen Blake on Facebook. Stephen says, what do you think about rotating fishing preserves around the island? I, again, would like to make sure that we uh, look at this issue objectively. Uh, fishing preserves are important simply because it allows us to, to make sure that we have uh, the species of fish that are available for our uh, upcoming uh, descendants and generations to come, you know. Uh, otherwise, we'll be able to uh, lose all of our fish uh, in some ways. Uh, so therefore, I would like to make sure that we get the stakeholders together and plan things out so that if we're going to make a decision in rotating fishing preserves, that we do the right thing. All right, Senator Luis Munoz, 30 seconds on the topic of possibly rotating fishing preserves. I agree with Sal as well, too. I think we need to involve the stakeholders to, de to determine this. Um, gosh, I'm, I'm just thinking that, that it, for, for our, our marine environment, it might be useful, but I'm not very familiar with how the, the fish migrates, and, mm -hmm. and maybe it might be a great opportunity to rotate it. Okay, well, yeah. thank you. Well, Ryan Calvo, you are an outdoorsman. To some degree, right? Oh, I love the outdoors, yes. Okay, so is this even the right way to go? Should we rotate our fishing preserves, or is it good as is? Well, uh, locally, things are getting done. The, they need to be res uh, supported with resources and uh, move forward. Uh, nationally, they have the uh, monument and the preserve out there, and then internationally, too, as well, because we can do all we want to preserve our reef and, and our resources around us. But the Marianas is big, so we've got to work together with all the other islands, too, and this is something that we'll, we'll bring into office in the 35th if you vote for us. All right, very, very true. Now back to the middle of the couch with Selba Bauta. This question comes from Terry Demian Catahay, and Terry asks, 
do you have any concrete plans? Concrete is in all caps. <laughs> so emphasizing that word. Sel, so do you have any concrete plans for helping the ever-growing homeless population on Guam? Certainly. Um, I, I definitely would like mm -hmm. to see Guam put together um, a homeless shelter so that we can bring all these homeless folks into the shelter. Uh, the culture of Guam allows us to, or, or, or uh, have set us up to uh, help people. So if we can put all these uh, uh, homeless people in a shelter, provide them with uh, the support that they need, and hopefully get them employed uh, and, and, and contribute to society, they'll be very useful. When they find jobs, they pay taxes. And when, when taxes come in, the government has more funds to support education, law enforcement, and public health. Uh, thank you very much. Senator Luis Munoz, almost every street corner now on Guam, you might see evidence of some sort of homelessness. What will you do? Um, I would like to support the Homeless Coalition uh, a little bit more. We, like uh, Sal said, we do have homeless shelters here on island. Um, a lot of them choose not to stay there because there are so many restrictions and they don't want to follow that. So I think what we need to do is go back to the, the, uh, the people that are homeless and find out exactly why they were there in the first place mm -hmm. and then address it from the from that issue and not so much just try to push them somewhere where they would be better. That's very fair. Fundamental understanding, of yes. course, being the key. All right, okay. Ryan Calvo, your thoughts on having a concrete, again, in all caps, concrete plan for fixing our island's homeless problem? Oh, uh, we can employ them, give them trash bags and incentives if they like those areas, give them a little shelter, and they can help to degrease the crime, a lot of the littering that plagues our, our islands. They're a part of our community, too, and I think we should uh, see how we can get them working together with all of us. All right, very nice. And so our next question, we'll go back to the middle once again. Steve and Liz Amaguin says, what is your plan, starting with Selba Bauta, to right-size our government in terms of adjusting the number of the headcount in Govguan? Thank you for that question. That's really near and dear to my heart. We need to really uh, reorganize and uh, reduce the size of government. There are a lot of duplications, uh, and, and certainly uh, the best thing to do is take a look at the makeup of the government and see where the... Uh, the uh, uh, support that's needed and the mission of each different uh, departments so that uh, we continue to have departments that are needed and those that are not needed, we can probably combine them with other, other departments to effectively utilize the, the funding sources of the government of Guam. All right, thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, same question to you, Senator, from Steve and Liz Amaguin. What's your plan to right-size the government? Well, um, I, I believe um, that our government is is at a, a good size already. We already started at 16,000. We're down to 11,000 employees. And just sitting through all the budget hearings, majority of the time you hear these uh, the agencies say that they just don't have enough people. And we have each employee doing maybe the jobs of two or three other jobs uh, within their industry. So I do believe that maybe what we could do is, is like Sal said, we just combine some of their efforts. Mm -hmm. That might right. be the best way to do it. All right, Ryan Cavill, 30 seconds to you, sir, for your thoughts on the headcount size of GovGuam? Okay, um, first of all, I'd like to thank the hardworking men and women in the government. It's not their fault, it's not the senator's fault, it's not the government's fault. If we don't all come together, all of us, and uh, that's what it's gonna take. I'll, I'll go in there and identify the individuals that are hardworking and give them the resources they need. And the other ones, will give them that vacation they've always been asking for, just not on our dime. All right. Mm -hmm. Excellent answers. Once again, thank you all for that, that feedback. And we are going to continue with our program. Keep streaming us, everybody, and keep those questions coming because we will be back right after this. <laughs> Summer is here, and at Cars Plus and Mighty, that means big savings. During our summer clearance event, right now, save up to $8,000 on select 2018 Ram 1500 SLT Crew Cab. Or save 3250 on a 2018 Chrysler Pacifica. Voted Family Car of the Year. 1.99 APR financing is available for qualified buyers. Plus, buy today and receive a Cars Plus value card, where you get 21 cents off per gallon at all Shell stations. Don't miss our summer clearance event. Going on now at Cars Plus and Mighty. Cars Plus, driven by you.
Big Fries took everything from me to keep my father from exposing the truth about Nacho Fries. Rebellion is forming. Flip the switch. Is there anything that tastes better than this? Revenge. The future is Nacho Fries! Looks like you guys could use a hand. All right, everybody, welcome back to D18 tonight. We've got one more question, then we will get our esteemed candidates' final thoughts. But you guys, you know this question was going to come up at some point, and we will end with this one. Uh, Senator Luis Munoz, we'll start with you. 30 seconds, what is your position on Guam's political status? Well, I think we're, we're inching a little bit closer to it. Um, I don't know if... Um, I do like to say that there are three choices that we have. Um, I wish I could vote for statehood, but I don't know that we... we we can even achieve that any time in my lifetime. Um, I do like the independence uh, status, but if I had it my way, I would probably want to go status quo because I, I do believe that we're, we're in a good position. All right. Yeah. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Basically. That's right. All right. <laughs> Ryan Calvo, your thoughts on what is your position on Guam's political status? The road to uh, independence is paved upon greater autonomy. We need to get our seat back at the table and let them know that we're serious we got to get our house in line, all three branches of government, to include the fourth branch of government, the civilians' government, and let them know that we're one voice, because Guam is for all of us. Mm -hmm. yes. All right, very true. Now, Selba Bato, we'll end with you, sir, with your final question. What is your position on our island's political status? 30 seconds. Please. Jason, first off, it's crucial that the people of Guam be educated on the three choices that they have. Uh, statehood, uh, independence, or free association. And the reason for that is because with, with more education, they'll be able to have the information that they need to make uh, a clear and objective decision. But certainly I favor statehood. And the reason for that is because with voting representatives in Congress and the Senate, we'll be able to take advantage of our positions with regards to federal laws that affect Guam. And with, without doubt, we're going to be able to get more, more resources and more benefits. All right. Thank you very much. Now, we've got just enough time for each of you to give your final thoughts and make your push for why Guamanians should vote for you. And we'll start with Senator Luis Munoz. 30 seconds, please. Thank you so much, Jason. And thank you so much for KOM for having this opportunity for us to talk about this. Uh, my name is Luis Borja Munoz. I'm number one on the Republican ballot. And uh, I would like to continue my quest uh, for to pr protect health care for both w women, men, and families. Uh, and also to help uh, protect uh, the, the, um, you know, the children. Mm -hmm. I think that's really what we're here for. All right, number one on the ballot right Number one on the Republicans. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Ryan Calvo, you have 30 seconds for your final thoughts, please. Uh, thank you very much to everybody that tuned in. Thank you very much, uh, Jason, to the KUAM staff. Uh, thank you very much to the candidates up here. Thank you very much to our, our sitting senator. Uh, my name's Ryan Calvo. I'm number nine on the Republican ticket. And May I please have your vote? I humbly ask. You won't regret it. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much, Ryan. And Susan Smosse for being here. Uh, Selba, about the final welcome. word is yours, sir, for your final thoughts. Thank you, people of Guam, for allowing uh, us the opportunity to uh, reach into your homes to listen to us with respect to our views on the different topics that, have, that we've been asked. I humbly ask for your support. I'm number two on the ballot on the Democratic side. And definitely, I have experience, education, and the willpower and the desire to give back to the people of Guam. And if you're given that opportunity, you can be assured that I will um, spend every inch of my efforts and my uh, energy to, to uh, make sure that Guam becomes a better place to live. All right. Thank you very much. And I would encourage each of the three of you to jump on Facebook after this because there's a lot more questions that we unfortunately weren't able to get to, but I'm sure the constituency would love to hear from you directly. So best of luck to all of you. Great. Well, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank all you. right. And we encourage you to go on our Facebook page. Keep interacting with our candidates. It's a really fun and active conversation. And for those of you that are online, stay tuned because the after party, Chris and Sabrina are standing by the right over there, and they are going to talk about how our candidates did tonight. So stay tuned. That's coming up right now on Facebook. Furniture provided by Furniture Kathy Style. Men's wardrobe by Royal Bix.